That's the labor. Uh, yes. You know, All right. For twenty thousand divided by yeah. ten forty. Yes. 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 This is six seventy. Emma, 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 Jig uh, yeah. work. Jig, hmm? did it work? Yes, but it has to. You have to keep. So, like right now, once we finish, I have to clean this immediately. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it will just leave. Okay, so who is doing our calculation? So, 4,666. I will be calling you so that we'll see. 2,600. You did not take the machinery. Eh? Machinery. Mm -hmm. 170. 170 Naira 80 Naira But ma, the underly won't be using one yard now. It's not there. No, we did not we start it. Oh, so we did not see it. 18 Naira 670 Naira 140 Naira 450 Naira for Zipa. 175 naira for half of interface interfacing for because we're using what what i am wearing and on a on a on an average do you use one yard for let's say the less is the less that you made do you so half yard so lining to 600 naira five thousand for pattern making 1,000 for <laughs> that 5,000, yeah, you are doing That's 17,000. Cleaning, cleaning 83 naira. And VAT. What's the date? VAT. 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 15. That's 17,072 yeah. naira. Sure, you know, we did not have um, the cleaner yet. We were arguing. Mm -hmm. So one over three of it is what? <coughs> That's fine. One over three of 20,000 is what? 20,000. 6,000 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, something. Divided by 30. Divided by 30. So what do we have? 223 now. Okay. So you add it to... That's 17,295. So this dress should cost. That's not the final price because we've not added our profit. Okay. So we have in total 17,295. Times 30%. Times 30%. Yes, what's 30% of 19,000? 17,000. So final price will be five thousand twenty-two. Five thousand two hundred. Five thousand two hundred. We had it together. Twenty-two thousand four ninety-five. 
Yeah. 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 So this is just that. Just make sure you write down everything you do. Ma, if you are the one buying the fabric, you call eh? the fabric for the dress. Eh, I will, who had it? Then? Who had it? You had it. Now you now have the amount of fabric. Let's say now. I now bought that. It's okay. I bought this fabric. Two thousand naira. For for the customers. And no, no. She's asking if we are buying it. it. You, you had the time. We did not have T fair. Sourcing of fabric, transport fair, and it is very, it's, in fact, it's very important you had it. So you must decide, okay, time. if you want to go to the market, how would you go? Are you going by Uber or you are going by transport? <laughs> <laughs> by Danfor. By <laughs> Now, by Danfor, I was asking, how many times do you want to be going to the market in a month? I've been saying I want to go to the market. Now, have I go? <laughs> I'm thinking of going to tomorrow, but I don't think I will go. So my sister said she she wants us to go on Saturday. I said, hey, we we'll go together. <laughs> At least we'll drive. I won't have to spend money on Uber because from here to if you're going to Lagos, from here to Lagos is about two thousand nine hundred. To and fro, that's six thousand. Even if you are driving, you buy for in your car. People can break them like that. Like that, thing. Have no doubt. Some of those things, it's too stressful being an entrepreneur. I'm sorry to say this, but then, if government can solve this, let's see, just two things. These two. And if we increase production, because we use 30. Yes. Mm -hmm. If we produce more, it will reduce the costs that you put on it. But do we have that capacity? Are we ready to even do more? Do we have market for it? So now, we can say our standard price for anything will be this. So if anyone brings Ankara, that they want to sew Ankara and tell them what's your style. First thing you should ask is, please, what is your style? What is your style? Because design also, yes, hours. Sometimes I can, Miriam, I can stand there for like three hours designing. Just designing, you know. And like, I don't know if you've been seeing that post that they are not paying for it your time it's mm -hmm. your skill it mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you can finish it now 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 that's our business we've mastered our skill that's why we can do that but they're not paying for because we can finish it in 10 minutes uh -uh. But for now customers can tell you ah it's not much now, is it not to join like this join like this join like this <laughs> but they're paying for our skills <laughs> then the materials you use because i use quality i cannot compromise on my quality So, because if you're telling customers that you're charging this, they want to know why. They are paying, so they want value for their money. Are you using China or Haba or <laughs> what are you using to, to finish their garment? So it's very, we didn't include packaging though. Packaging, nylon. bag, nylon, you see? Oh. But like I said, standard. But I'm giving the example so you can just eh? delivery. Exactly, delivery. Delivery, even if you are not the one delivering, because they will charge them for delivery. The phone calls, like some people said, the air time we buy on our phone, how much do you recharge per month on your business line? That is why it is very important to separate your private life from your business. So you'll be able to account for everything. Because you cannot be spending uh, business money. When you don't even have money, sometimes your business will have money for you. You don't have money, so you don't have money. You cannot be spending your business cash. So everything, like I said, we should include packaging. Packaging is very important because you won't give clients packaging includes the bag, the anger, 
like now if we are packing packing our clients i don't like them putting the garment directly inside because we use nylon we don't use paper bag i want them to put it in a transparent bag first just in case the delivery person mixes it with something else and before anything will spill in the hair you know the way you pack package your thing is very important so you don't want to spend too much on packaging when you are not even making a lot. So we need to look at all of these things and uh, have a standard price, like I said. Standard price, just have a standard price. So for example, if, if you want to sew lace now, lace will say 30,000 normal laces, and that includes the underlay that you had. I like to use Duchess, but if the client is doing, I will move it to me. I will just use raw silk for them. Duchess is expensive. I think now it's even, because we have dealers, another thing you can do is you should have, you should make contact with your suppliers. That way you get quality materials that you are using, then you get them at reasonable. You can even, they can even offer you credits. If you are not boxed up and need to the relationship good build, it's good too. So sometimes when we are stuck, you just say, oh, Lavaja, give me now. They will give you, even without you asking. Will. Yesterday I was calling, okay, okay, I buy um, men's fabric from him. And um, I just, it just talked to me that I paid because I couldn't pay. There wasn't internet when I was, he, he likes it, he does that for me. Even if I don't go with guys, I pay later and I pay when you so I usually transfer. So I, I I wasn't sure if I had transferred and he did not even call me to remind me. And that's because of the relationship I have with him. So you need to you need to have a um, you need to have a good relationship with your um, suppliers and you will enjoy credit facilities <laughs> if if you if they can afford it as well. So for example, like I said. So laces we say 30, but laces that are heavily beaded, you say for example 40. You were not here when I said that. Beaded laces can sometimes you have to remove the beads first. Yes. So then beat back. Mm -hmm. So in such situation, I will not pay her 1000 I'll probably pay her 3000 3, 4000 Depending on how ethic or whatever it is. So you just make sure you factor everything into into it. Any question? Okay. No question, right? Yes. for me now. Madam, um, Stella, yeah, come and talk to us about keeping invention. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. First and foremost, I want to appreciate uh, um, Madam Green for this opportunity. about keeping, we call it inventory keeping, but in my school, we call it records management. First of all, I want to know what records are. What do you understand by records? Records are the information you've got from the transaction you've entered, that you think they are of valuable importance to you. If they are valuable to you, you keep these records for reference purposes. So this is records. Then, um, to complement the records management, management is all about all the techniques you need to apply in keeping these records. That is records management. Then, before I continue, um, we are born some, some time ago, and before we are born, our parents kept records because they are very, very important. So, record keeping cannot be overemphasized. It's something that is very, very vital that we must all keep. Our parents kept record, even when we are in the womb, 
we are keeping records about us until the day we are born. Like, I will use my, my son as an example. When he was born, he was weighing four point something. They put a label and they gave him the time he was born and all of that. So this helps. If I had not kept proper records, maybe when he grows up, you will, will not know when he was born and all of that. I still have that label now, 10 years ago. Wow. I still keep them. I learned how to keep records before I, I entered the university for my, for my dad. Because he keeps records, as he goes out and comes in, he keeps records of everything. So records management is something that we cannot overflow. It is something that as an individual, as a human being, we must keep records. Um, I will give my illustration based on fashion. fashion now. now we have um, different types of records. We should know how to identify records. Every paper you see around is not records. So you need to identify important, um, those that are important, those that are less important. So records is classified, or we have four types of records. One of them is vital records, vital records. The other one is important records. The last one is useful records. And the last one is non-essential record. Non-essential record. Um, I want to maybe briefly define vital records. Vital records are records that are so vital to your business that you need to keep them safe. Because if you lose them, it will affect your business. So you have to keep them very, very safe. And it is advisable that you keep them in a fireproof safe. Sometimes you see people taking their vital documents to the bank. So that shows that that document is very, very vital. Like in the airport, which has now. I believe we have vital document that if you lose that document, it will affect the business. Mm -hmm. So you should identify that and know where to keep it. Yeah, then the other one is important records. Important records are also <coughs> very important that uh, you need to keep also, which is not as important as a vital record. I don't know if you're flowing. Measurement. We we'll measure what under what we we'll measurement. Client measurement. Yes, God forbid. Yes, if, yes. If, yes. If, if someone is vital, vital. It's, vital. it's not vital. It's not vital. Yes, I can measure them. Let me just define it. Let me just define it. Important records. They are also they are not vital in the sense that you can still get them back when you go through stress and costs. Understand. Maybe you're taking the measurement and you lost the measurement. You have to call the person back. Mm -hmm. You have to start taking the measurement afresh all over again. Mm -hmm. So that is important records. Then useful records. Useful records are records that you use on a daily basis. You need to keep them. These ones too, you can get them back. I don't know if I'm maybe yes, yes. between vital and this or that. Then non-essential records. I don't know if uh, anybody can try. What do we understand by non-essential non records? Something that is non-essential. Mm -hmm. Not important. Okay, can it be? So what? If you don't if you celebrate students, if it's like a gift. Gift, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me use the let me give the definition of non-essential records. Non-essential records are records that soon outlive their usefulness. They soon outlive their usefulness. So, how can we, as somebody from the definition, give us an example of non-essential records? Pencil eraser. Sure. Pencil eraser. She said pencil eraser. No. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, the illustration that we um, the example that we do give to our students, since it's related to the office, um, 
maybe um, invitation cards. The definition says that soon after the this oh. usefulness. Somebody invited me for an invitation for like maybe um, seventh, like the, the marriage we were going to be attending now. And she gave us an invitation card. It is still useful because um, we've not got into that the place. place. As soon as the marriage is over. done, it's over. You don't need to keep that. I'm going to keep keeping cards of what the marriage is. So they are not records. They are not records, but you need to, like in your business environment, you can't pile up papers everywhere. That is why you must be able to know what records are and classify them. Useful ones, useful ones, vital ones, and keep them. All of that. Then the importance of keeping records. The importance of keeping records is um, so many, and one of them is that it makes you be business like. Mm. When you keep records, like I learn by writing anything that happens, you check my pattern. Mm. The pattern mm. of what I do. I will write my name, mm. I will write the day I did that pattern. That's what I do. Sometimes, when you've written your name and your, the day you did that pattern, do you mean you did that pattern? January, and something happened to your body. Mm -hmm. You reduce or you have it. Mm -hmm. So you will not know what to do yeah. at that instance. But if you don't keep records, you will not know what to do at that instance. Um, mm -hmm. Causes of poor record keeping. Why do we not like keeping records? It's because of the challenge attitude. Mm -hmm. You don't want to keep records. What you do, fast, fast. You do not as opposed to yes. Like I, saw, I was saying it this morning, I saw somebody's pattern there. And it will be very, very difficult for you to identify who is it because no name, mm -hmm. except the person can identify the writing. Mm -hmm. the writing. Then another thing we, we need to discuss about under records for keeping on the keeping is um, classification um, classification of filing. How do you classify your records? Now, in pattern making, we cannot use, if you want to use a folder, you know a folder, a folder is something that you use, a container that you use to save vital documents. And this folder comes in different shape, size, and all of that. Mm -hmm. By what a uh, uh, boy is having, they should okay. package all okay. that things. That could serve as a folder for all and working tools and all of that. But what I'm trying to say now on that classification of file, it is not called a file. When you have this container, it is called a folder at that instance. It is only referred to as a file when you save something inside. When it is still empty, the air level, when it is still empty, it is referred to as a folder. Oh, it's referred to as a folder. But when you put something inside, it now becomes a file. It means you have to give it a name. <coughs> you have to give that file a name. And a file is a container that contains related information. A file is a container housing related information inside. I don't know if you're getting it. Yes, yes. maybe you have a pattern. You can put all your pattern inside a folder. You say this green folder contains all my patterns. And this green one contains all my um, scissors, eraser, and all of that. Okay. okay. Well, I was going to ask what's the best way to, you know, to keep our patterns? I'm going to talk about that. Okay, I just want us to establish the fact that you can differentiate between a file and a folder. You don't call it a file because when you go to the market, you want to buy this regular, we call them, I need file. But when you tell them folder, except people that know, they don't know. 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 They
because we must give it a name. Like the um, illustration that I give to my student is, since it is now a file with something inside, and reference is being made to this file often, and you're being asked to go and get a result for ND2, and I'll come to the result for ND2. And you cannot just walk up to the filing section or cabinet and start looking for results. So you have similar in the two for different years. You have to be specific. I want a result for in the two 2017-2018. You now walk up there, you're able to fish out that particular file. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yeah. Okay. Then classification of files. File classification as let me just limit it to fashion now. Can be classified under um, alphabetical file classification, numerical file classification, and geographical file classification. Under the uh, alphabetical file classification, you arrange your file according to the alphabets. Maybe you have like five clients with their names starting with the alphabet A, but different names. You have Ada, you have Ada, maybe you have Ada or something else. You have to follow the alphabetical order. You have to follow the, maybe you have um, Ada, and which other name will start with? Um, Are they doing? You need to arrange this properly alphabetically. So in all these names, the first alphabet is Ada. The first name is A. Mm -hmm. So how do you arrange this? Which will come first? Ada comes first. Ada comes first. Ada comes first. Which will come second? Mm -hmm. Ada is Ada doing. Ada is Ada is Ada is Ada is Ada is Ada Ada is 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 so that is how you classify your file, your pattern, and put them inside the folder. And then we have a, a shelf or a drawer. You arrange them according to the names, alphabetically from A to Z. That's my question. Are we to fold our patterns or yes. hand it? And I'm going to show her mm -hmm. your own. If you cannot fold it, then you hand it. In, in, space, in yeah. industries, they will have they 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 hand hand it. It. They have If you don't have space, hand. just buy a free yeah. file and, 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 and keep them like she said, okay. alphabetically. The folding will it be flat? It has to be flat. You, can roll. Roll. you cannot roll. It has to be flat. Be if you roll, you are eating space like me. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Then the next one is numerical classification. You are reading them according to numbers. Mm -hmm. But I think the alphabetical Alphabet classification is yes. better than the The numerical classification is done to the hospitals, insurance, and all these other Sometimes when you get to those, you ask for a number. What's your name? So you might find out that some of these are speaking the same name. Classification under the classification. 
Then the next thing to <laughs> know again about keeping records is um, security. Security, I'm not talking about um, security security high security. How do you secure your yes. patterns? How do you do that? And one of the recommended methods is um, the spasm method. The spasm method. What do I mean by dispersal? You decentralize your pattern. Like, and the way it was mentioned yesterday, that we have original copy of our pattern. We can trace out another original copy and keep that original somewhere. Master pattern. Master pattern somewhere. So, you do what is called dispersal. Don't keep all your patterns in one place because anything will happen. Hmm. So I think I will end that. Any question? Did we get a note? Do you have handouts to give us? Handouts. Maybe. Maybe I'll, I'll post it on the phone. Okay. Before I leave. That's fine. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> so, we do business, and in doing business, we make profit. One issue is how to determine our profits, because in some cases, we're not able to track down how money comes in and how we spend the money. And in business, there's an account. In account, there's an account we call an account. In an account, you can determine if you make profits or you make loss. There is an account like that, and it's called trading profit and loss account. It has two sessions. In the trading session, at the end of the trading session, you get an account called. I mean, you get your profit called the gross profit, and in the profit and loss session. You know if you make profit or a loss. Now we're trying to put a price on our garments. Okay, let me make some make, let me make a comment about that if I go. So in costing our garments, you know, your school is in two sessions. There's production and there's training. So what the training what that session, that training session is as in like the expenses you make there, you're not supposed to put it in costing your garments. No, so in making your final account at the end of the year, you bring in whatever cost there. So the profit you made there is kind of different from the profit you make from the garments. And the expenses you make there is not pertain does not pertain to the profit you made from the garments. 
So you're not supposed to put them together. So I'll be taking that as an example. So we have the trading profit and loss account. <laughs> So before now, you would have kept record of the things you buy, the sales you make, your expenses, income, just like that. You know, your business now, your business model maybe is excess. You can still have And if profit comes from there, you, call, you can call it income. So while we're going on, they might, like issues like that might arise. So let's start, start with the trading account. You know, the first part of this account is the trading account. So make it simpler for us. Okay. I'll make it simple. Don't turn us to accountant. Okay, let's just say uh, you're making garments. The trading aspect is going to be your production of garments, your direct costs, like that. So, this is the format. So, right now, they change the format. I'm going to use the format to get easy understanding. So, this part, the debit part, contains all of your expenses. Like let's say your accounting year has begun and you have inventories. Your inventories will be the first thing going out to your opening inventory. You bring it down here and just move it up for a moment. And then after your opening inventories, your purchases. So the opening inventory is what we have right in stock. Yes. From your previous accounting year. Okay. Let us just say, okay, trade profit and loss account for 2020. <coughs> you know, this account is always prepared at the end of the year. Mm. And in some companies, since they couldn't prepare it, maybe December 31st, January, February, they prepare it before they submit to the taxation yes so you buy things you bring your purchases here now in buying things you need to transport them to your to your schools, yeah. all of your inventories, all those are part of your direct expenses. Like I said, your opening inventories, the things you bought, your direct expenses, any expenses like direct, like you said, your while trying to cost our garments, all expenses are directed to it, that are directly related to it, all are to be brought here. Okay? You know, after you buy your things, the carriage inwards, the amount you pay to bring your things to your store, we call them carriage inwards. All your carriage inwards should come here. And in case, and in case, customer returns goods, returns inwards. All your returns inwards are to come here. You know, this part is going to contain your sales. Now we're trying to cost our goods. This part, we're going to get the total cost. Money out. Yes. The total cost and then everything, everything you sold should be here. Money. Money pin. Mm -hmm. So, your carriage in what? Let's say 1,500. Mm -hmm. 
So now, after this, you have to bring all your direct calls that 